The first step in any optimization question after reading the question is to draw a picture. So let's take a look at the picture that we have drawn. We have the curve y equals 3 over x, which we have sketched right here in yellow. And then the question describes a line segment that is cut off by the first quadrant and is also tangent to the curve that we just drew. So that line segment right here would be in green. We can see that it is tangent to the curve at the point marked by the black dot. We have called that point A comma 3 over A. That is sort of an arbitrary selection of variables. So basically the X coordinate of that point we are calling A. And then the Y coordinate we obtained by plugging A into this equation. We can see that at that point the green line segment and the yellow curve intersect at that point because the green segment is tangent to the yellow curve. Because they intersect, then they have the same y-coordinate. And therefore, to find that y-coordinate, we can plug a into the equation. So that's where we're getting the 3 over a from. So basically, right there would be 3 over a. So this is the picture. That's step one. Step two is to come up with a couple of equations. And one equation that we're going to need to come up with is what I like to call the constraint equation. Now in this particular case, the constraint equation is actually going to be the equation of that green line segment. So we're going to have to find a way to develop an equation of the green line segment. We know from a pre-calculus course that the equation of a line is written in a sort of point slope form. So it would be y minus y1 is equal to the slope of the line times x minus x1. Let us also recall that x1 and y1 would be a point on the line. So we're going to write that down on the side here. x1 and y1 are a point on the line segment. Now, we've already discussed that we have a point on that line segment right here. So this A is going to be our X1, essentially. And then the 3 over A is going to be our Y1. So why don't we go ahead and just plug those into the equation of our line segment. So again, the Y1 is 3 over A. This will equal the slope of the green line segment times X minus A. That was the x-coordinate of a point on the green line. So we're doing pretty well so far, but what we really need next is the slope of this green line segment. And that becomes our next challenge, is to try to fill in something for that slope. Now a key idea here from the picture, hopefully we can see, is that the slope of the line segment is going to equal the slope of the curve at that particular point right there. That's kind of the definition of a tangent line, is that the slope of that tangent line is equal to the slope of the curve that it intersects. So to get the slope of the line, we're going to actually find the slope of the curve. So that's what we're going to do next, is find the slope of the curve. Let's come down here and talk about how to find the slope of the curve. Now we know the curve has the equation y equals 3 over x. We can certainly rewrite that as y equals 3x to the minus 1. And then since we're looking for the slope of the curve, we need the derivative. And that is what Calc 1 is all about, is finding derivatives. This is a simple one, isn't it? Because it's just a power rule, so you're going to multiply negative 1 by 3 to get negative 3x, and then subtract 1 from the previous power to get negative 2. So we can actually rewrite that as negative 3 over x squared. Now, recall, at this particular point, the x-coordinate of that point is actually symbolized by a. So we can go just a bit further here and say that the slope at the point a would equal negative 3 over a squared. That's the slope that we're going to be substituting in right there because the slope of the line is equal to the slope of the curve at that point, negative 3 over a squared. So we can swing down here and write the equation a little bit more here. y minus 3 over a is equal to our slope of the green line segment times x minus a. 
So that's pretty good. We've got the equation of the line in terms of A. What we're going to do next is try to think about the distance, or I suppose the length of that line segment. After all, if you go back up to the question, we need to find the minimum length of that line segment. So we need a new equation. We need an equation for the length of that line segment. And this becomes what I like to call the objective equation. Our objective is to minimize the length of that line segment. Now we probably have learned that the length or distance of a line segment is equal to the following equation. This can be developed by using a Pythagorean theorem. We will skip that development and just assume that we have learned this distance formula. And so what we're going to do is plug into that distance formula, but to do so we need to find two points on the line. Now if we go back to our line, we can perhaps mark a point right here. This is the so-called y-intercept. And then we would have another point down here. This could be our x-intercept. Notice we're using these two points because we need the entire length from that y-intercept to that x-intercept. That would represent the length of that entire line segment. So we need to find those. We need to find those, or at least expressions, for the y-intercept and for the x-intercept. Let's find the y-intercept. Recall, at the y-intercept, the x-coordinate is equal to zero. That is always true for a y-intercept. So let's go to our equation, this equation for the line, and we're gonna find the y-intercept by plugging zero into that equation for the x. So we'll have y minus three over a equals negative three over a squared times zero minus a. Now of course zero minus a is just negative a, so we're gonna have y minus three over a is equal to negative three over a squared times negative a. We can clean this up a bit, can't we? Because you've got a negative multiplied by a negative, so that's gonna make it positive. Also you can cancel a factor of a here and one of the factors of a in the denominator there. So on the right hand side you will have positive three over a. And then if you add three over a to both sides, you're gonna have three over a plus three over a, which is six over a. So in conclusion, the y-intercept is located at zero comma six over a. So that's a good thing to know. We also need the x-intercept. We go back up to our picture. Here's the x-intercept. We know that to find an x-intercept, you're going to let the y equal zero. So let's do this all over again, but this time we're gonna let the y equal zero. Remember, you're plugging into the equation of the line right here. So letting the y equal zero, we would have zero minus three over a is equal to the right-hand side, which is negative three over a squared times x minus a. The left side simplifies to negative three over a equals negative three over a squared, x minus a. This is a little more annoying, I think, to try to solve this for x, but maybe what we can do to both sides here is multiply by, let's see, we wanna cancel out this negative three over a squared, so we'd have to multiply by the reciprocal. Why don't we multiply both sides by negative a squared over three? So we're gonna to try to squeak that in here. You're gonna multiply this side by the reciprocal. It's gonna be a squared over three, but it's negative. Sorry, that's a little messy, but the idea is that this three will cancel that three, and that negative a squared will cancel this negative a squared. So the right-hand side, if we continue down here below, the right-hand side just becomes x minus a. So I suppose we don't even need the parentheses. The left side, let's see here, you're gonna have a negative times a negative, that will become positive. You'll have three times a squared, so that's three a squared over, and then down here, three times a is just three a. Let's reduce the left side further, the threes cancel. A squared divided by a is just a. So we have this little equation, and then we can add a to both sides, and we can see that the x-intercept is actually located at two a. So in conclusion, the x-intercept is located at 2a comma zero. 
Now we can go and use our objective equation. Remember, it was our objective to minimize the distance between those two points, between the y-intercept and the x-intercept. So we're gonna plug in. We can perhaps call the x2, y2, this point here, the x-intercept, and then the y-intercept can serve as our x1, y1. It would work either way. So here we go. We're gonna plug into the distance formula. It's gonna get a little messy here, but x2 is 2a minus x1, which is zero and then we square it. y2 is zero minus y1, which is six over a, and then that's squared. Okay, this is getting us somewhere. We have the objective going on here. We can simplify it. 2a minus zero is 2a, but then you square that, you get 4a squared, plus you're gonna end up squaring a negative six over a. You can do that on the side if that helps. Squaring the negative six gives us positive 36, Squaring a gives us a squared, so this becomes 36 over a squared. Good, now this is our objective, is to find the value of a that would minimize this distance. That's what we're trying to do, is find that value of a that would minimize this distance. But it turns out that this would get a little messy because we have the square root. So there's another little idea that we can do, or that we can utilize here, is that rather than minimizing d, we can actually minimize d squared. And so long as we minimize d squared, that in turn will also minimize d. And so it makes the math just a little bit easier. Rather than trying to minimize d, we're going to minimize d squared. So what we'll do is square both sides of this equation. And we can see then that d squared becomes simply 4a squared plus 36 over a squared. Instead of 36 over a squared, you'll find it useful to actually write that as 36a to the negative 2. Very good. So this is the new objective. We've rewritten it in terms of d squared. Now we need to find the value of a that minimizes this function, basically. And so this is where we have to use some methods from earlier in the chapter, finding a minimum point. And so you recall that to do that, you have to differentiate. You have to do the derivative of both sides. So the left side, you could basically just write as d squared prime. That's just representing the derivative of our quantity d squared. The other side, you're going to do some power rules. So the derivative here becomes 8a. And then over here, this becomes minus 72a to the negative 3. And then you recall that once you do the derivative, you set it equal to 0. And there's a nice trick here that we can employ for solving for a. You'll notice you have a to the negative 3 here. So what I like to do is I like to multiply every term by a to the positive 3, just like this. What's nice about that is you end up with, let's see, 8a times a cubed. That's going to be 8a to the 4th. These when you multiply them become a to the zero. Remember you have to add the powers, but a to the zero is just one. So this is eight a to the fourth minus 72 equals the other side is still zero. And now it becomes a lot easier. There's no negative exponent. So add the 72 over, divide both sides by eight, and then take the fourth root. So we can see that a is going to equal the fourth root of nine. Not a very pretty number, but certainly a correct number. And your teachers might require you to prove that this actually minimizes the d squared function. So to actually prove that it minimizes the d squared function, you could actually do the second derivative test. Some teachers kind of omit this, but just to make sure that this indeed minimizes the d squared, we're going to do the second derivative test. So we can go back and snag our first derivative, which was, yeah, right here. It was the 8a minus 72a to the negative 3. 8a minus 72a to the negative 3. That was our first derivative. Let's do the second derivative now. So this would give us 8 plus whatever 72 times 3 is, 216 and then a to the negative four. That can be rewritten as eight plus two sixteen over a to the positive four. Now certainly, if we plug in our a here, if we plug in our a is equal to the fourth root of nine, we're gonna have eight plus two sixteen over the fourth root of nine 
to the fourth. And that indeed, it actually doesn't even matter what the value is, but all you need to note is that that is greater than zero. And so when the second derivative is greater than zero, in other words, it's positive, you might remember that that means the function is concave up. Well, a concave up function located at this little critical point of fourth root of nine would indeed be a minimum. So we've proved that at the fourth root of nine, we minimize the d squared function. So in conclusion, we now know that a is equal to the fourth root of nine. Let's make sure we've actually answered the question. The question is to actually find the length. So we haven't yet answered the question. We have to find the actual length. And so let's see here. Here is our d squared function. What we're gonna need to do is still find d. That's what the question's asking us is to find d. So that's what we're gonna do right now. And we might find it useful before we plug in the fourth root of nine is to maybe rewrite that. And so, Let's see, the fourth root of nine, that can be rewritten as nine to the power of one fourth. We can rewrite nine as three squared, but then when you multiply these exponents, you would end up with three to the one half, which is the square root of three. So that's just a little way of rewriting the fourth root of nine. It's actually equal to the square root of three. How about that? So that's what we're gonna plug in now. We're gonna plug it into our d squared function making a equal the square root of three. So we'll have four times the square root of three squared plus 36. Let's put this over the square root of three squared. Notice what we did there. We just rewrote the 36 a to the negative two as 36 over a to the positive two. And now we just simplify this. So radical three squared is three, four times three is 12. On the bottom here, we have the radical three squared, which is just three. 12 plus 12 is indeed 24. Be careful here though, that's d squared. Remember we manufactured a sort of artificial d squared function. To get d, we have to take the square root. So the length of that segment is the square root of 24, which is the same thing as the square root of four times the square root of six. The square root of four of course is two. There is the minimum length of that green line segment. Thanks for taking the time to watch the video. If you're interested in making a small donation to my cause, I've got my Venmo ID below, but if not, absolutely no problem. I appreciate you taking the time to watch the video regardless. So thanks again.